Tonight, I'm going to share with you a, sh a brief, a short message, actually from the book of James. And James is actually a book of wisdom, right? In the wisdom literature, in the Old Testament, you know, Proverbs, and then uh, in the New Testament, it's actually the book of James. And so I'm going to highlight some important points from the book of James, kind of an overview. Uh, you can go back and you can read the epistle of James again for yourself. Right? Before I continue, let's just ask the Lord to help us in this time of uh, sharing of the Word of God. Shall we pray? Lord, uh, you have said that your Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And so, Lord, I pray that even as we listen to your Word, Lord, Lord, you speak to our hearts, Lord. Lord, you shine your light into the darker places in our hearts so that, Lord, we will find, Lord, enlightenment and revelation. Lord, touch our hearts, transform us by the power of your Spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wisdom. Uh, I have been uh, wonderfully married to my wife of 45 years. And uh, after a few years of marriage where we had real rough time, I finally sat down with my wife and I said, we need to talk. How we can make sure that our marriage uh, will be wonderful and will last long, right? I think that was after my 10th year of marriage. And we discussed, discussed, and finally we came to this final conclusion, decision. She and me agreed that whatever is uh, the issue in the marriage, I will always have the last say. All right? And the last word that I always say is, yes, dear. <laughs> that's why I'm still uh, uh, making it. So that's wisdom, okay? And so uh, what is wisdom? Wisdom is uh, faith for wise living. The readers of the epistle of James were Jewish. You know that, right? And to the Jewish mind, if one truly believes the truth, one will also live the truth. The next slide, please. If you truly believe the truth, you will also live the truth. That's the Jewish mind. Okay? And so that's the context with which uh, James was writing to the Jewish people. Now, one of the things that uh, James talked about is in James chapter 1, verse 22, and it's the issue of deception. Now, deception is not just the presence of false teachers and false prophets, although it involves that. But deception sometimes is closer home than you even know it. Because James says in James chapter 1, verse 22, do not be merely listeners of the word, or do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what he says. So in other words, whether it's me or it's you, whoever it is, if we read the Word and uh, God speaks to us in His Word and then it just ends there, we do not apply it, we do not surrender to it and then we go on uh, our Christian life week after week, Sunday after Sunday. James is very blunt, uh, very, very direct in saying, he says, if you live that kind of a Christian life, I'm sad to tell you, lovingly, you are living under deception. Okay, you are deceiving yourselves that you're okay. Oh, I, I attended a wonderful Bible teaching. Wow, what a wonderful seminar that was. Oh, I learned so much from this pastor or this, this teacher. Wonderful, right? Oh, give me more, give me more. <laughs> you know, sometimes church people are like that. They just, oh, give me more, give me more, I need more. And sometimes I feel lovingly as a pastor, I'm not really prepared to give you more until you begin to apply. All right? In Singapore, I cannot speak for India because this is my first time in India. I do not have the right to speak about the church in India. But in Singapore, I want to tell you, if only the Christians in Singapore apply just 5% of what they have been taught, it will be revival! <laughs> All right? And I'm saying that about the church in Singapore. All right? So wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom is truth on the inside that helps you live right on the outside. Right? Truth or wisdom is truth on the inside. How do you get truth? You get truth from the Word of God. And when God speaks to you, 
you will get truth. But when He speaks to you and truth is birthed in your heart, right? It's a starting point. You need to then surrender to the truth and then the truth will begin to transform you. The Christian life is all about transformation, okay? More than just salvation. Thank God for salvation. But after you're saved, what then? God is then interested in transforming us from the inside out. Amen? All right, that's important. And the more transformed you are, the wiser you are. After all these years in ministry, when I started out, my hair was all black. I kid you not, okay? Now it's all white. Some people say, wow, Pastor, what happened to you? I say, I've grown in wisdom. <laughs> uh, it takes many years. Right? So, what is the evidence of wisdom in a Christian? How do you know that you are wise or that at least you are growing in wisdom? The Bible doesn't leave us to guess, especially the book of James. So James, as I said earlier on, is a epistle, uh, is a wisdom literature. All right, very direct, very easy to read, okay? It's not like Leviticus, uh. <laughs> all right? Uh, or the book of Ezekiel, oh my goodness, all the wheels and wheels and wheels. All right. Wisdom, uh, James is so direct, and sometimes so direct that it's a little bit uh, uncomfortable to read, right? Uh, so evidence of wisdom in a Christian life, James points it out. When we observe how, oh, it, when we observe how you behave and relate with people in your life, be it family, church community, in the marketplace, or simply among friends. How you behave, how you relate, and how you speak. Your speech, very important. The two key areas we turn to will be the way we speak and the way we behave and interact with people around us. I just want to highlight these two because in the book of James, there's so much that deals with these two areas. The way we speak and the way we interact or relate with people around us. So let's look at the power of the tongue. Scripture has a lot to teach about the power of the tongue. Right? And uh, Proverbs 18.21, that's a wisdom literature of the Old Testament. Proverbs says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. In other words, if you love life, you will eat fruit of life. If you love death, you will eat the fruit of death. Depends on what you choose. But the same tongue you have, you can either go this way or you go the other way. Very seldom you have neutral, okay? All right? Some of us, okay, lah, I don't want to go this way. I just sit on the fence. I want to tell you, you sit on the fence, you will tear your jeans, okay? <laughs> and I don't care whether you, you wear expensive jeans or not, okay? All right? And in the book of James, uh, he uses three pictures, paints three pictures to describe the power of the tongue. A ship's rudder, a horse's bridle, and a spark in a dry forest. Okay? And uh, ship's rudder. Uh, in India here, I don't know which port you go to where you have those cruise ships. Huh? In Singapore, there is. All right. I like the ones that go cruise to nowhere. I don't know where they are going. <laughs> I tell you why they go cruise to nowhere. The moment they go into international waters, they open up the casino and people gamble. I sat outside the casino of a cruise ship before and I noticed one thing. I sat there, okay? All the faces going in, very happy. Coming out, all not happy. <laughs> I don't know why, you know? I don't know why. And then my friend told me, you don't know where? They all lost money. I said, okay. And I don't know why people still want to go in, but that's lack of wisdom. Okay, ships rather. You know, ships rather, huge ship. Sometimes 2,000 passengers. But it is the pilot can direct the ship with just a very small instrument underneath. You don't see called a rudder. Just turn the rudder and it will go end up in Beijing. Turn the rudder, end up in London. <laughs> yeah, just a rudder. And so our tongue, very small. Huh? But the power in it can direct 
your entire life. The second is a horse's bridle. We don't have horses on the street in Singapore. But I've been to countries where I see the horses. They are magnificent creatures. The horses are beautiful, okay? Huge, tall. I don't know how people have the guts to go on it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Right? And they control that huge animal. I mean, compare strength to strength, horse strength and our strength, we are nowhere, no match. But you control that horse with the bridle. Okay? You can ask the horse to go this way, that way, just with a bridle. So in the same way, your tongue is so powerful, it is like the bridle of a horse. And then the last picture that James paints is the spark, little spark can cause a huge forest fires. I saw the TV, I was just horrified the last few years ago where this huge forest fire in Australia, right? And it just burned and burned and people actually died in the car because it was so fast, they could not even get out of the car fast enough. My goodness. All right? And so, the tongue is just like a small little spark. Sometimes you say, after all, what's the big deal, man? You know, I just say this little thing. You know, I, I, I just speak very truthfully. Yeah, but you speak truthfully, but not in love. You could actually ignite fire in your family. A forest fire in your marriage. Right? Deep hurt and healing in your children. Okay? Not to say you might even lose your job sometimes. <laughs> Okay, you can, you can go home. You don't have to come back, okay? <laughs> All right, so that's the power of the tongue. Now, so, so what governs our tongue? This is important because the tongue is so powerful. We've got to ask ourselves, what actually governs our tongue? Right? And uh, Jesus said, uh, you brood of vipers, uh, how can you who are evil say anything good? For... The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Matthew 12, 34. The heart is the control center. Right? In an army, the headquarters control center. Everything. Right? So the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right? Okay? So I tell my church people, as a pastor, lovingly, I say, I say this to you. I do not intend to hurt you or insult you, all right? But I want to ask you, when you squeeze orange, what comes out? Orange juice. Orange juice. When you squeeze lemon, what comes out? When you, I squeeze you, what comes out? <laughs> when you're not under pressure, sure, you come to church, hallelujah, brother, oh, hallelujah. How are you, sister? Oh, wonderful. But when you are at home and you're under pressure from your wife or your son and they, they squeeze you, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I won't want to say those things that you say. It's not very nice in church, okay? So we leave that for another time. Pastor, you... <laughs> all right? So watch your heart because Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all... Very interesting, the word above all means that is priority. Above all, guard your heart for everything you do and say flows from it. Okay? The Jews during Jesus' time, oh, they were so careful about clean, making very, themselves very clean on the outside. Clean, wash the uh, drinking utensils and the bowl and everything, right? But inside, dirty. Jesus says, that's hypocrisy. You guys clean so... Uh, 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 you are whitewashed sepulchres. Inside is all dead men's bones, okay? You may fool one another, but you certainly don't fool me, Jesus said. That's a paraphrase. And the Spirit of God is here. And like their pastor said, he never wants to bring condemnation, but he wants to bring conviction because he wants all of you, his precious children, to grow in wisdom. Amen? All right. So the great human irony. 
the great human irony is whenever a person says something or does something that departs from what they or we expect them to say or do. Okay? You know a brother or sister, maybe, maybe in your life group, and you gather after the live group session, and this guy, supposed to be your assistant life group leader, <laughs> and when he opens his mouth, he says, my goodness, what happened? He must have had a hard day, right? Woo! And James chapter 3, verse 9 to 10 says, With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, like what we have done with the worship team. I enjoyed it. Huh? Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light of the darkness. And then at home, what comes out is totally opposite. And you say, that is irony, right? So, James says, with the same mouth, we praise our Lord Jesus Christ. And with the same mouth, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth, come praise and cursing. And James says, it cannot be like that. No way. Now, I want to ask you a question. This is not a trick question. When the negative comes out and the positive comes out from the same mouth, which one you usually will believe that person is? Is the negative. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the true person. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Anything bad comes out of the mouth shows that there's something not so good inside. That's it. Can you say amen? Now, I'm a pastor. I say this lovingly to you, okay? We are all on the same journey. But the Word of God is a light to our lamp, to our feet, and a light to our path. Amen? And God has drawn you here to this service because He wants to cause you to grow in wisdom. Amen? Okay? So, who wisdom in our behavior, quickly, huh? because I have to finish the sermon soon. Ah, wisdom in our beaver. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it. Uh, let them show it. Right? Just like faith in the New Testament is not a noun, it's a verb, okay? Faith is a doing word, you know? Same for wisdom. Wisdom is not a noun, wisdom is a verb. If you have wisdom, you will show it. People will see. Hey. Sometimes you say, only God knows my heart. Really, man? I don't know your heart, but I can see what comes out of your heart. Hallelujah. One time, my, my wife, in the difficult time, you know, I'm so busy in ministry, I didn't give much time to her. Uh, she said, darling, I, 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 I can't sense that you really love me. Huh? I said, but you can't see my heart, right? I, in my heart, I really love you. She said, yeah, I can't see your heart, but I see your actions. Oh my goodness. Thank God for the women. Amen. <clears throat> All right. I'm the driver. My wife never had a driving license, but when she's beside me, she drives me up the wall. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, after this, you meet me in the lounge. Men, we pray for each other. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me conclude. How do we gain wisdom? All right. Psalms 51.6 says, Lord, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. So here, there's a link between truth and wisdom. You teach me truth and help me then surrender, apply the truth that I may have wisdom in my inward part. Okay. And then I leave it out. So where does it all start? Proverbs 1, 7 says, For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Of course, James said it very clearly. He said, If any man or woman lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And when you ask, 
I assume that you really ask with a sincere heart. You say, Lord, please help me. I want to grow in wisdom for the sake of my marriage, for the sake of my family, for the sake of my community. I want to grow in wisdom, right? It's wonderful to be a wonderful worship person, a worship worshiper or, you know, move in the gifts of the Spirit. All wonderful. But one thing I find lacking that needs really to be uh, cultivated in the church is wisdom. Can you say amen? In the home. Alright? And so, the fear of the Lord. Because when we have the fear of the Lord, then we are more careful that we would not just push aside the Word of God. Amen? The Word of God will speak to us and because we fear God, we say, Lord, I will submit and surrender to your Word. And the proof that you are surrendering to the Word is when you apply it in your life. Amen? So my prayer for all of us here is that you will be a church filled with people who are growing in wisdom that will make an impact in this beautiful city of Hyderabad. Can you say amen? amen? Can I invite the worship team up here? And we want to give opportunity for you to just open up your heart and respond to the Word of God. Can we? Hallelujah. Can I just ask you all to close your eyes and bow your hearts before the Lord in prayer? The Lord is good. Hallelujah. And He loves us. And He wants to change us and transform us. And we are all on a journey with Him. And what we need to do each step of the way is to recommit our lives into His hands. Amen? Say, Lord, you take my hand. You guide me. You lead me in the way of truth and wisdom. 